afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome very, very much and the fourth session in the AirOps webinar series. Unfortunately, still not physical, still uh, not in beautiful Brussels, but after three successful sessions, we still are very happy to uh, invite you to an engaging uh, session today with the help of the experts of Eurocontrol. That's what Euro uh, AirOps Europe is all about offering the business aviation community a platform to strengthen our competitiveness, to learn from one another, use best practice, and to allow us to deliver best-in-class client and passenger experiences. In case you're not aware of the EBA, we are a uh, non-profit in Belgium. We've been around for over 41 years, and we are the voice of, European of the European business aviation sector to all the stakeholders. We support and represent over 700 members and they encompass the full value chain of the business uh, sector in Europe, from fuel companies, insurance companies, and majority operators. Our mission is to enable responsible, sustainable growth for business aviation, enhancing connectivity and creating opportunities. I'd like to remember you that we can't do this alone. We can only do it because the people on the ground that encounter issues that fe uh, feed it back to us. Your help, uh, is most important to make sure that we put the right things on our agenda to make your life easier. So please do engage with us, get in touch with us as soon as you engage any issues. Why do we have bare AirOps? Well, business aviation is facing more challenges now, but also more opportunities than ever. And AirOps aims to bring the latest operational information that's critical to you uh, on this platform. We've been highlighting key priority topics for the industry in the last few weeks. Three weeks ago, we discussed the state of play of business aviation by looking at the traffic and trends. Two weeks ago, we discussed COVID-19, Brexit, and the challenges ahead. And last week, we put the need for safety management systems in ground handling on the agenda in another excellent session. All these sessions are available online, so if you haven't been able to participate, you have the opportunity to uh, look them up afterwards. But, last but not least, today, with the support of Eurocontrol, we will be discussing the tips and tricks on planning efficient and uh, flexible flights. It proves to be a very interesting session, and we hope it is uh, of uh, value to you. Before we start, we at the EBA and the AirOps team would like to thank our sponsor for supporting the AirOps webinar series. Thanks to their support, we're able to hold this year's series, which is Skylink, UAS and MyAirOps. Now we specifically like to thank our main sponsor of today, MyAirOps, who is not only a sponsor at this event, but was also an exhibitor at last year physical AirOps in Brussels. In case you don't know MyAirOps, it's a trusted global provider of aviation software for flight ops, maintenance tracking and FBO management. They have over 30 years of experience with uh, several software uh, solutions and services like flight support, maintenance, management, and planning. The company has offices around the world, among others in the UK, Poland, the US, and the Middle East, and the Far East. And they offer product and services um, for the whole ecosystem. Um, so we would like to invite you, get in touch with uh, MyAirOps by visiting MyAirOps and ask for one of their demos or their 30-day 30, 30 trials. Um, but again, thank you, MyAirOps, for supporting this uh, seminar today. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce the moderator of today, Vanessa Rullier. Vanessa uh, is standing out in a man's world and the, the ladies, um, the, the Day of Women yesterday, were very proud to have Vanessa in a very man-dominated world and she proves to be a huge asset to the EBA. So we're uh, pleased to have her on board. She is the Senior Manager, Air Traffic Management and Special Projects at the EBA. She's been with us for over five years and she is the focal point for all ATM related matters, including the deployment of exciting stuff like the satellite based approaches, which is of key importance for EBA members because that will allow you to fly into secondary airports when the weather is bad. So, Vanessa is the person, if you have any questions within the EBA on ATM, she's our expert. Today, we're very fortunate to have Vanessa running this session. So Vanessa, the floor is yours. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for the introductions. 
Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we are really happy to have you all around the screen. Uh, unfortunately, since we cannot be uh, meeting each other, but very soon, hopefully. So welcome to that seminar. Uh, this is the for number four. Um, we had the pleasure to hear from Eurocontrol during the first uh, AirOps uh, session about the latest traffic trains, as uh, Robert was mentioning earlier. Today is the opportunity to liaise with Eurocontrol as well, and so uh, more particular uh, in uh, in particular with the network manager uh, colleagues in order to hear indeed on how the network manager can help you to bring more efficiency and more flexibility in your way to deal with your flight uh, operations. Um, so um, it will be so our pleasure to have our sp uh, four speakers today representing the network manager. They will have uh, a series of presentations that so we will be happy to go through first. Then we will have a, a short uh, uh, debate among the, uh, with them. And of course, I will be then happy to take some questions out of the Q&A function. So welcome to our four speakers. Thank you for being with us today. It's a, a good team of superheroes. Um, Giovanni, Boris, Andy, Anthony, thank you again for being with us today. I would like us to take a few minutes, of course, to introduce the four of us, the four of you, sorry. Um, I will start with Giovanni. Giovanni will take you through a general presentation on the network manager services. Uh, so Giovanni started, <laughs> Giovanni started his career as area radar air traffic controller at various airports in Italy. He joined Eurocontrol uh, 20 years ago. He was a floor controller uh, at the operational room of the central floor management unit at Eurocontrol, had several other positions, and in 2014, uh, he took over his current role as the big chef, at the head of, uh, or among them, <laughs> uh, as the head of the operational room uh, and network operational uh, services. The next superhero on the list will be Boris. Boris is a flight efficiency and air traffic flow and capacity management expert. He worked on projects related to traffic demand predictability, airspace design, and flight efficiency. So Boris got a master's degree in air traffic and transport engineering from the University of Belgrade. Before joining Eurocontrol in 2013, he worked in Serbia and Montenegro air traffic services. And as, as you can see from his pedigree, he will be uh, dealing with or introducing you the issue around uh, the non adherence of ATFM slots. The next super and expert is Andy. Andy held several positions in the UK CAA and UK Royal Air Force. He joined your control in 1994 and has been flight pl pr planning domain manager at Eurocontrol since 2009. In that position, of course, he has responsibility for looking after the smooth evolution of flight planning uh, services. And it's of key importance for today's session because this is the tool that he will be introducing you to. It's a project owner of a specific uh, application, flight application, uh, which is available on the network manager portal, which is an interface offering airspace users access to flight data and operational tools from the network manager. So this is what we will have a demo, not a demo flight, but a demo. <laughs> um, our, our last speaker will be Tony. Tony uh, Stupero is coming uh, from the Eurocontrol Airspace uh, Airport Division. Tony started his career in the airline world. He held several positions in the flight operations at Swissair and Lufthansa. And he was also a ground ops manager and slot coordination at Ifiner. He joined the Eurocontrol team in the CODA unit in 2004. And as of 2010, he has been part of the Eurocontrol, Eurocontrol Airport division. That's why 
um, Tony will be the best place to introduce you some of the uh, airport activities at the NM and some of their key uh, advices that ca they can uh, provide you with to deal with uh, some issues, for instance, with airports. Um, before giving the floor so to the first superior Giovanni, I would like to start with a pool question. Thank you. So thank you for your answers. This, as we have been saying, will be key information for our speakers who will be introduced to the NM services and different features of the NOP portal. And we will be quite keen to know if you use that to the NOP portal to the, greatest, to the greatest extent possible, also using all the tools in combination of, with the, 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 NOP, uh, the NOP portal. So waiting for, for the outcomes. Uh, of that pool question. Thanks. Okay, that's very, a very uh, nice uh, results um, because as I, apparently none of you are, I uh, know, oh, sorry, you are not, oh yeah, you are all using a, a, a bit of all the different tools that was uh, showing on the screen. So, uh, but uh, very, yeah, okay. So thank you so much. I'll leave now the floor to Giovanni. The floor is yours, Giovanni. I think you are in mute, Giovanni. Right. You okay. are still in mute. Now you should hear me. You should hear me now. Yes, thank you. Okay. So first of all, let me thank you, Vanessa and Robert and DBAA, and of course, the sponsor for the invitation. In the world post-COVID, it will be more and more necessary that we run the operations all together, no actor excluded, of course, because all the actors are important for the network. The lemon million of flights in 2019, of course, is the overall outcome of all the military, the civil and the, the civil aspect user up and including the business flights. So uh, at time it tyrant, I will go immediately to the first slide, we'll try to, this is a general presentation on uh, who is the network manager, uh, the NMOC, and uh, in some way how we can bring you, uh, how can uh, bring more efficiency and uh, flexibility to your flights and how you we can help you and you can help us. So, first slide, I have clicked and uh, should appear the, the other one. It's still blocked. Did you get, okay. Now it's my control. Okay. For all those who have never been at your control quickly, this is our headquarters and the picture below a bit empty the option now because there are not many people because we have just one third of the people because of low traffic. It's the network manager operation center. So basically a couple of things about the network manager. Really short, we have been committed by the European Union to run four network functions, the airspace and route design, air traffic flow management, scarce resources that are the codes and the radio frequencies and of course, crisis management. And uh, we are ruled by uh, more ne network function implementing rules, the main one being the one, two, three, that describes what we must do as an M, not only for the 27 European states, but all the 43 members of Euro control. And then we have the 255 released in 2010 that lists the common rules of the air traffic flow management. Basically, these are the bi this is the Bible that we must respect. Now, just a quick picture before going into the three main parts of the operational room. It's uh, the overall, overall routes that can be flown in the world. And you can see the concentration is in the US, in Europe, of course, that's all the all green area. And now when uh, we zoom in, you will see the, the major effort that is done by the network manager to keep the, the software updated. Now, like it happens for the roads, normally somebody has to maintain the roadmap and of course, the direction, the, the description of the routes, and so on. And this is what you see about the European network. It's a very complex stuff that is, of course, is embedded into the worldwide route and network structure anyway. Now, zooming in more, what you see now is the interface between uh, Belgium, Holland, France, uh, and, uh, and the UK. You can see the complexity of the routes and how much is complex to maintain them. Uh, there are... 20 people who are working uh, on H16 just uh, doing this really surgical job because if there is a mistake done in the root description or any other data, it may result in the, at the IRAC date 
uh, with uh, a number of invalid flight plans and flight plans will be rejected. So this is an important job. Of course, then at the end, summarizing, we create and maintain all the network structure, the service area, the airspaces, the routes, the points, the free route airspace and the airports. Now, the sectors. This is an interesting picture because it shows all the 1,750 sectors that are, this is a very old structure, it's all the 20 years, although the, the airspace reorganization is ongoing, it takes really a number of years to make it better. So this is an old structure, it's a three-dimensional structure, and of course, all this is decided together with the network manager by the 43 ANSPs. Basically, the plotting of the sectors is fundamental for the traffic load counts and so on. And not only the sectors, all the 525 airports are plotted on, uh, you don't see them here, but of course, one day, if you come to visit the ops room, I will be more than happy to show the ops room. The 43 NSPs and the 68 area control centers, the ACC in Europe. Flight planning, the other important part of the ops room of the NMOC is the flight planning domain. Now, if you want to fly from uh, Istanbul to London Nitro, obviously you need to input a flight plan. You need to send the flight plan to the network manager, to the IRPS system. Of course, our job is that for well, each one of these flight plans, up to 37,000 flight plans in the good old 2019, of course, because here we are maximum at nine, 10,000 flight plans per day. Each of the flight plans is checked versus the route and the network structure. Then it, when it is okay, is acknowledged and distributed, of course, to the tower uh, uh, departure, to the tower of the arrival, and to all the other ANSPs. For this particular flight plans, take into account that is really a straight line that is not the case, unfortunately. So it will be go via Turkey, Bulgaria, uh, um, uh, Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, Austria, um, Germany, MUAC, and then with the long control and eventually to the tower. That's what we do automatically in the system with a low number of flights that need still to be corrected by our precious guys in the NMOC. Now, to make things more complex, this is the map of all the military airspaces in Europe. You can see how much they, how many they are, and they are called the airspace management cell areas that can be allocated in a flexible way after the coordination and negotiation between the military and the civilian users. What I can tell you is that every day, a huge number of areas are used for military exercise, uh, air force training or defense activities. The IFPS system rejects, of course, suspend all the flight plans that are trying to enter the military areas during their activation period. You, as you can understand, that's not a healthy thing. So we make sure that safety is maintained. And of course, we reject or suspend the flight plans with the suggestion on how to reroute. And our flight planning staff supports the airspace users in their flight planning with rerouting suggestion, manual correction, and many and mo much more. Moving quickly to the flow management domain in the NMOC, that's the safety part. Uh, again, uh, if you are flying then with uh, some uh, uh, airlines, of course, uh, the pilot tells you sometimes we have to wait because on the ground a little more time because of traffic congestion. So I love to show these pictures. I'm doing that since years because they really give the what is the meaning. In the 50s, the infrastructure to go by the sea, the roads were full, there were not many cars, but then 50 years later, the problem is always there because, of course, the infrastructure has been widened. The airports are becoming bigger, the number of root sectors is higher and so on, but the number, the demand is quite high. So we have always a demand, a gap between the infrastructure capability that is the overall capacity of the network, network and route wise and the demand. So this is something that I've observed in the last 22 years since I started at Eurocontrol. There was no year without ATFM delay because the number of controllers, unless the NSPs has a very good policy of succession plan to recruit controllers, there are always hiccup. Just think about what happened in 2018 and 2019, 25 million minutes of delay, mainly given by few NSPs. So, of course, we cannot stop the aircraft while flying and uh, we have to stop them on the ground. So, in order to maintain the highest level of safety for aircraft and the passenger, it is vital to avoid airport or radar sector congestion. Every airport has an hourly capacity, just Fiumicino, 104 departures and arrival, Amsterdam 130. Every airport declares the official capacity that is stored into the system. And each one of the 1,750 sectors uh, has a, a declared hourly capacity. So what does it happen? We count the flights, of course, in the ETFMS system, counting from the flight plan, 
and uh, then when the capacity declared is exceeded, the NMOC staff applies the flow measure, a flow measure in agreement or coordination with the airport of the NSP. The slot then is communicated to the operator, the tower of the NSP and is making respected, of course. Obviously, the higher is the demand and the lower is the airport or sector capacity, the higher is individual delay. Long delays, of course, lead to flight cancellation. You may find yourself with the airport closed due to meteor or en route sector that is stopped because of volcanic cash clouds or a system failure. If you want to fly to one of the small airports in Greece of the islands, quite often the capacity is three arrivals per hour, but the hourly demand is 12. And so the minimum delay for the aircraft operator there is three hours. Now that's how it works. This is the timeline of uh, a sector X in the network from uh, midnight until uh, midnight. And uh, the graph shows the, the load, the number of flights and the red line is the capacity of the sector is that in this case is 40 flights in one hour. So there is an overload there that is shown from 640 to 940, the hourly kinds up to 50 flights. So in order to maintain the safety to the control of flights and passengers, then a flow measure is applied. And of course, we can only do that. We can only take in consideration all the flights between 640 and 940, and then the system automatically assigns a delay on the ground and where the flights go. So the outcome of it is an ATFM regulation applied in this case for the sector X from 740 to 1120 with the more than 1,700 minutes of TFM delay and the peak delay for flight is 48 minutes. Now, uh, the last three minutes, I will use it to, to show this slide. This is the forecast. We need to have the forecast traffic in order to plan the summer. This is the slide until June. Of course, it's a, it's a forecast. It was published on the 28th of January versus the flights in 2019. We are still running at minus 65% of the traffic versus 2019. And by June, we should reach minus 55. So this is another exercise. We made a simulation based on 75% of 2019 traffic. And we compared versus the sector configuration that the NSPs are going to open or are supposed to open during the summer. And the color coding over there shows the area that may be subject to an ATFM delay. So you can see low delays in, Bre in Brest, in Portugal, and there may be significant delays. Of course, if we will have 75% of the traffic, we may have delays in uh, Rans, Karlsruhe, of course, then in Barcelona, Marseille, Greek airports, and some parts in the Southeast taxis in Croatia. And uh, of course, in Bremen. We will see that. For me, it's a scandal that the NSPs will not be able to cope with the 75% of the traffic without giving delays, but we don't expect major delays. And anyway, our policy that we pursued also last year is that personally and all the NM, we want to get close to zero minutes delay because that is the real target and we are working for that. First of all, we don't have a strategic route in plan 2021. 1,200 rad restrictions are suspended. We have full staff in NMOC to support the airspace users. We have a great ability to save delay and every flight is, sweet, is treated equally by the NMOC system according to the first come, first serve rule. Then we have other strong activities that for function, Tony will talk about it, cross-border weather and smart weather task force. Now, how can we help you? The flight efficiency task force, if you want to fly, to want to file a flight that is efficient in terms of you find an optimal route, just contact the network manager flight efficiency task force just established, which Boris is one member. And uh, of course, I'll give you also the telephone number at the end of the presentation, only in the pre-tactical phase. <coughs> Pardon, in the tactical phase, we have a wide panoply of miti delay mitigation measures. We can use offload, rerouting or level capping scenarios. We have a strong aircraft operator officers who sent the rerouting proposal that you must accept if you are okay with it. Slot list manipulation by flow management staff, Airport function that Tony will talk about it, the support in the flight plans with our staff that is flight planning out H24 supporting the e help desk. If you have a delay, just uh, we can respond within three minutes and then the flight up will be described by Andy. The last slide is about how can you help us and yourself? First of all, you must file a, you must, you should fly a flight, file a flight plan, possibly at least four hours before your BT to give us the possibility to prepare a mitigation plan in case of a bottleneck either at the airport or en route. Keep the EOBT updated. Don't be afraid of a bad slot. Tell us, please, that, that that is the right departure time. And then fly what you file. What I'm trying to say is that 
If you have filed a flight level at 380, don't ask for a different flight level unless you have a problem en route or whatever. And keep and stick to the geographical route, stick to the route that you have put in the flight plan. Respect the airport slot at the Greek airports, at the France, French airport, particularly at airports with high summer holiday demand and low arrival day rates, because otherwise you will disrupt the demand, the load, pardon, and we will apply regulations. Respect the slot CTOT if your flight is subject to a flow measure. Please don't depart earlier. Depart on time according to CTOT. And if you don't have a slot, respect the, the arrival time that you have put in the flight plan at the destination airport. It's equally important as to respect the CTOT. In case if you have high delays, submit the request to the help desk. I can guarantee you that within three minutes you will get an answer and very likely a support in terms of slot, uh, in slot improvement. And that concludes my presentation and uh, sorry to speed up, but time is tyrant and I give the floor to Boris. Thank you very much, Jenny. I have a control, just a moment. Yes, there it is. You did a very great introduction to my part of the presentation while mentioning uh, the, 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 the previously uh, discussed file as, it, uh, as, you, as you plan uh, actually activities. And it's all about uh, the delivering the optimized flight plan uh, to the NM system. I remember one of our operational stakeholders mentioned uh, uh, during one of our meetings, you really care about the flight plan accuracy data. Could you tell me why? And the reason is actually behind the slide that the flight plan data, departure, arrival times, waypoints, routes and levels are key elements in the preparation for the airports, ACC and of course our NMOC to manage the flight in the safe and optimal manner. When we get the flight plan data and when we cross this with the airspace data, we are able to predict, to position, to analyze the traffic at this current moment, but also to understand what will be the traffic situation of the future and based on it to propose the measures to be applied into a network. We have idea that the operator shall ensure prior to the operations of the flight plan that the content of the initial flight plan is correctly reflecting its operational intentions. If this is not the case, and if it is reflected in the form of the deviation for, from the initial requested flight level, or if we have a deviation from the initially specified departure times, a deviation from the route or other reasons, we can have a wasted capacity in some of the sectors, which will bring the lack of confidence in the accuracy of forecast traffic counts, Eventually, the protective capacity will be modified by the, by the ANSPs and in some particular cases, increased workload might bring and lead to the safety occurrences. One of these uh, deviations or non adherence issues that we considered over the last uh, period are actually uh, YoYo profiles. Uh, by YoYo profiles, we are considering all the flight plans that are having planned descent and then the climb for a certain amount of feet according to the item 15 of the fired flight plan. Some of these descents and climbs are falling into the radius of 2,000 to 10,000 feet, uh, which is quite significant. And the problem behind is that usually these profiles are hardly ever flown, almost never. Uh, they are almost never followed by the pilot or, 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 or instructed by the ATC. And this can bring a downstream predictability issues and anticipated traffic in the downstream sector. According to the statistics from the 2018, as the current uh, year is not very relevant for showing these numbers, we had around 200 to 300 of these flights per day, which could lead to the serious operational issues. And the most important reason behind those are quite different. So it could be for avoiding ATC regulations. Uh, intentional avoidance of the maybe uh, a particular regulated airspace, uh, reasons uh, which are lying behind uh, rad restrictions, uh, airspace design related reasons, avoidance uh, of the particular weather patterns, but quite often also because of non appropriate uh, uh, update of the company routes or the maintenance of the database by the CFSPs. And when we discuss about the EOS, it's quite nice to see how it looks like. 
Uh, this is the example from the year 2018. We had one regulated sector and the number of the flight plans avoiding that airspace uh, during quite short period. We see the vertical avoidance and on ATC, all of these flights entered into the particular airspace. And I believe that this case was uh, reported as the safety uh, relevant uh, occurrence and further investigated by the NSP authorities. In order to minimize and control and to better inform operational stakeholders about the uh, profiles in the system, NM together with the operational partners developed a particular tool, which is uh, available in the NM different user interfaces, including the CHMI and the NOP portal. And that tool was able to show to the aircraft operators if they have a a critical or operational interest in yo-yo profile in their in their flight plan. As from the April this year, some of these categories of the yo-yo profiles are going to be rejected in case of the schedule, non-schedule and uh, general aviation type of the flight. While we are still going to monitor them from the, for the circular flights, helicopters, military and other type of the flights. By rejection, I mean that they will be rejected by the NM system upon the filing of this kind of the flight plan. And similarly, we have a shortens which are uh, falling under the same category of unanticipated uh, flight planning. Uh, usually, NSPs would uh, introduce a particular group of the rod restrictions to prevent this kind of turns, which are never respected on ATC. And for that reason, those which are happening in the upper airspace above flight level 200 will be if they are greater than 120 degrees and there are a significant number of them will be rejected uh, by the IFPS system. At the end of my very brief presentation, I would just like to share the recommendations we discussed with the operational partners and the possible way forward how to accommodate and to better actually control some of the issues related to the flight planning. And with the CFSPs, we were discussing uh, the addressing of the local system limitations, which would include optimization software limitation, airspace structure database maintenance, wind pattern, uh, wind pattern impact, in order to ensure that the flight plan is operationally practical and does not contain unintentional elements as requested by their customers. For the aircraft operators, we are advising to regularly review their company routes uh, to advise their uh, crew the, to adhere to the flight profile unless uh, strictly advised or instructed by the ATC to accommodate other one uh, to continue to use the tool which will uh, further be described by my colleague Andy Woolen and presented to you during the next minutes of the presentation and of course to support other awareness activities. Similar recommendations are for FMPs, while the NM will actually uh, continue to monitor these uh, individual uh, occurrences and this will continue discussion with the relevant partners on the reduction of both. Just quickly for the timeline, as I find this quite interesting for all aircraft operators, as from the April 27, we are going to start rejection of the YOYO profiles and with the 17th of June 2021, we are going to start rejection of the turn angles. Before that, you have a possibility to look at the profiles using the NM tools. And for any further questions, you're welcome to address them through the email, which was and will further shared by, by my colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Randy Woolen. I would like to invite you to present the major star of this discussion. Thank you, Boris. Good afternoon, everybody. I am uh, going to give you a very brief demonstration of the new interface which is being developed by Eurocontrol for use by the airspace users. This interface is replacing uh, eventually the NOT portal, which uh, is available today. We will start rolling out onboarding slowly uh, airspace users uh, in May this year with this new interface with full operations for everybody available from July. 
this uh, these interfaces, they're not portal and this particular interface, they, they come free of charge to the airspace users for the first two access per organization with a, a small admin charge if further access tokens are required. Uh, it's a basic uh, flight list view with access to further det details of your flights uh, in the NM systems, as well as uh, some tools to help you get out of difficult situations. The 27% of you who voted for uh, in, in the earlier poll said that you used uh, the NOT portal as well as your own flight planning tools. That is completely expected. This is not a replacement for a flight planning tool. Uh, this doesn't give briefing packages, but this really gives helps you get a view of issues with flights when it comes to air traffic flow management issues, but also it can help you if you uh, would like to use the tools to get more efficient flights. Uh, I'm going to, the, the, the interface is set up where as a dispatcher, I can just save my query so I don't have to come in each day at start of a shift and set up my interface each time. I, I Here I've just set up a, a query based on um, NetJets flights. Uh, this is a development system. It is fed with fake flights and it is uh, also uh, got fake regulations because obviously at the moment there aren't many regulations. So what I'm going to show you first is that as a user I can set up alerts to tell me uh, when things are not normal for flights and though that is configured by the user. So here I've configured to tell me when flights are suspended or diverted and there are other, depend, I can decide which level of information is important. So, and, and if I want to, if I have a large flight list and I want to see the three suspended flights, I can just click on that button and a copy of those taken to the top of the queue so I can easily access them and work on them or I can remove them. So in this case I'm going to go and look for a suspended flight and, and just demo what, what, what I could do with this. Now it's highlighted with the orange line. I open up a second glance look at the information in here it tells me the flight is suspended, RVR is unknown. And it tells me that the, uh, due to a regulation, uh, I have to declare an RVR in my flight plan. In this case, I haven't. So it's told me what the problem is. You'll see some buttons have appeared. One of them is send FCM. So I need to confirm my flight. If I take that option, I put in my RVR value, send that to the network manager, it's been accepted. Uh, I have a problem because there's, there's a, uh, trying to refresh my screen, but the, uh, the Zoom meeting information is uh, hiding my, uh, where my mouse needs to click. But as you see, it's refreshed now. And you'll see that flight that I was just working on is no longer suspended. It's file slot allocated. So with that quick action to update my flight plan with an RVR, I've got out of my suspension and you'll see a delay has been um, allocated uh, for, for when that flight passes uh, two hours before EOBT, I will have a slot issued. I'll take another example of how these tools could help you. In this case, I've set up alerts that color code my delay values for my flights. And if the flights have delays over 45 minutes, they're in red. And you'll see I've got two down here. This one's got 247 minutes delay. So I will uh, go into the second glance. I have some, uh, some links I can click on. I'll click on one which is called flight management. That opens up the flight. Um, excuse me, it hasn't worked because of some uh, glitch in, in the system. I will try again. It, it will uh, not work again. Anyway, my attempt is embarrassing. I'll try once more. 
No, sorry, I ex apologize for this embarrassing uh, failure. In the flight management, which I was attempting to show you, you can uh, reroute your flights. You can ask the uh, system to avoid the regulation and it would propose some routes that may well uh, be an increase in costs for distance. But in the case of 247 minutes to delay, in this case is uh, in the Maastricht airspace, the system would be able to find a route around the Maastricht airspace and you could book the slot to ensure that you don't get a worse slot uh, when you refile. You can take the flight plan proposal that we gave you to your flight planning system, update your flight plan through your own system, creating your briefing package for the new route. And when that flight plan is filed, it would uh, be accepted by the NM systems and the slot that you booked the, with, that is, would be significantly less than the 247 minutes. If you've completely avoided the airspace, you would have no slot. And that would be, uh, that would be accepted by NM because of the, the, the potential to uh, book a slot. Uh, Gianni mentioned the e-help desk. This interface has a uh, access to the uh, e-help desk. Um, excuse me just for one, one moment. I'm trying to understand why, uh, as I said, it's a development platform, but it's, it's, uh, I'm hoping that my issues have gone away. No, they haven't. Um, so yeah, we have the uh, access to the e-help desk in, in the interface. As was uh, mentioned by Boris, the interface shows you uh, the sharp turn angles. If there, is, if there is a flight with a sharp turn angle, you would be able to see it highlighted in this in this interface. The yo-yo uh, would be highlighted in the interface. And if, uh, in, the, in this case, the opportunity, the NM systems run a process for flight efficiency uh, every day, and that can pick up when it identifies flight plans that have been filed, which potentially another route exists, which is more cost efficient, uh, this is highlighted as well in the flight list to uh, for you to be able to go into the data that is available in this system, have a look at the routes that uh, have been proposed as a potential cost uh, efficiency and uh, run them through your flight planning system to see if indeed if you refiled via that route, it could potentially save you money. Uh, that's all I'm going to... Uh, show you for, for today. If, uh, and I think because of the failure of this, uh, this demonstration, I think uh, uh, it would be uh, beneficial for those who, who do use NM systems to have a better, closer look at this interface. Um, we could set up, if there's enough interest, a dedicated, uh, a dedicated session uh, to, to demonstrate the system and uh, ask questions, answer questions uh, when we can. Thank you for your time. And again, I apologize for the, uh, the failure of the demonstration. I'll hand over now to Tony. Thank you, Andy. Um, yeah, it's one of those technical issues, but uh, they do come up in demos, um, but it is a very good tool. Um, what I'd like to do is um, just give you a few highlights about uh, what potentially could come up this summer um, and what we will try and do to, to solve some of the issues. So, just... so as Gianni mentioned at the beginning, um, we will have what we're calling an airport function in NMOC this summer. Um, the idea is that um, we will have a situation awareness at a, an airport level, and it will allow us in NMOC to focus our attention where it's needed most. Um, what it will do is give us uh, a point of contact 
with at an airport level rather than with the FMP. We'll be able to talk with the airport operations centers or the ops managers if they see problems coming up. <clears throat> um, and we can so try and solve the issues together with them. So we, we also will be looking at um, day minus one performance issues um, and what we call hotspot airports. And we at day minus one will communicate with operators, including GABA traffic. Um, with a, with our ideas how we can minimize the need for regulations and sometimes that is giving you a specific arrival time so regardless of your airport slot we may we may contact you to try and arrive 10 or maximum 15 minutes earlier um, most of the time that's achieved by flying a little bit faster um, or when you actually run your flight plan it's possible that with tailwinds you don't need to do anything because you will be arriving 10 15 minutes earlier so, but the idea is to minimize the need for, for regulations. So what, what we can um, offer to um, GABA operators, I mean, we, ha we have an overview of the, the demand at day minus one. We have an overview of slots at day minus one. And given your, your business, um, the, the, the way you have to operate you you get a lot of late requests so so if you're if you're operating to an airport that's known for for high delays um feel free to contact us um and we can try and advise you of the situation we can we can't tell you a specific slot time to apply for but we can tell you when there when there is space um that if you did apply for it then that's more than likely um the slot that you you can get and operate to with hopefully zero or minimal delay um what what one of the main things we we've had for the past few summers um we've been legally mandated by the the greek caa um and we're responsible for um monitoring flights and suspending flights that operate with no slot now, uh, there is a definition of no slot within the, the Greek um, AIP, and it will be on no TAMs. And their definition is actually holding no confirmed slot or plus minus 20 minutes of what you've actually been allocated. We, we operate very closely with the Hellenic Slot Coordination Authority. And um, we have access to via OCS to the live data. So any changes that happen with the slots, uh, we see immediately. How, how does this work? <clears throat> um, we, we manually, if you like, check each airport um, through the Greek islands that are level three coordinated. We compare the slot time in OCS with what you're filing. So, it's very important here to to remember we're we're looking at your intention if you if you happen to delay due to technical reasons or whatever then that's understandable so we're, we're looking at it, your intention to operate according to your airport slot um when a flight isn't a, is found to have no slot uh we get confirmation um with the ca with the hsca um just in case there's any very last minute changes or they're they're sitting on a an email or something um and they confirm the the slots held and what we try and do and we may well have spoken to a number of you last summer um we we operate with a collaborative decision making sort of system we will try and contact you as an operator so um Last year, we were looking in field 18. If there was a 24-7 a ops number, um, occasionally there was a crew contact, which we have to be very careful on crew rest. So it's, um, it's easier to try and co contact your 24-7 ops number. And we make you aware at the earliest opportunity to, uh, to the fact that you, you don't have a valid airport slot. <clears throat> so... Um, and we, we try and, if you like, warn you that you've got an hour or so um, to try and get the slot you needed and change your flight plan or 
you do get the slot you needed and then everything's okay. Um, occasionally, um, even and through the CDM process, we're, we're talking to you and you still, um, some operators still don't get the slot they need and we are forced to, to suspend that flight. Um, and then, yeah, then the process has to start um again you you know you can't take off so you you will have to to get the slot or adjust your flight plan according to your slot um we monitor everything continually so as soon as your slot changes you don't have to call us to say you've got the slot you needed or um we we do monitor and as soon as we notice it we will desuspend your flight plan um just to explain how we do the monitoring um, we basically, within the Greek NOTAM that's issued, and it will be issued again for, for summer 21, um, we ask that you put a remark in your flight plan. Now, you, you have various options. You can either put in um, your flight number, you can put in your, your slot ID, or you can put in the registration. It, it's as simple as that. It's three simple checks that we do. Um, and one of those... Um, remarks in field 18 should correspond to to a field in the in OCS which helps us identify the the flight in OCS it's important to remember here um, please don't put in your PPR number it's it's totally irrelevant for us because a PPR is not your actual airport slot you you get your PPR number first and then you get your airport slot so it's different numbers so the PPR number doesn't help us identify you um, when we're doing monitoring um, as I say it's three checks um, what you filed as a call sign versus the flight number what you filed as a call sign versus the filed registration if you're using your registration as a call sign or your GN number um, you know so, or it, what you've been given by the slot coordinator so for summer 21 on the on the Greek airports um it will be effective but the dates and operational hours are still to be decided and they will be notified via NOTAM only this year it won't appear in the AIP um and that NOTAM will be issued in due course so um one other thing that you should be aware of um there's a high probability that Khan will become level three coordinated this summer um, there will be a decision taken by uh, DSNA. There's, a, there's various meetings the week of March the 22nd, and at one of those meetings, the decision will be taken on Khan. Um, and the likely periods will be uh, the 11th of May to the 24th of May, but that one is subject to planned events going ahead, i.e. the Formula One, the um, film festival, etc. But... <clears throat> more than likely definite is um, July, the whole of July and the whole of August. Um, now last year, Khan was the, the number one delayed airport on the network. A lot of you operated to and from Khan and you probably got delays last year. Um, the, the tower and the approach, um, the reason they, they regulate in the end is because of the unpredictability in the system. They, they don't know how many flights are coming. They they lose sort of, um, if you like, control. So they put on a regulation and sometimes the regulation has a, has a huge effect. Um, so we will sort of work with them on that. And hopefully um, you guys fully understand why the, the coordination is probably required. Um, one thing that's not on this slide and has come up in the last couple of days and potentially also affects you. We have we we have the Euro 2020, which is actually in 2021, happening from mid uh, from mid June until mid July. There, they still haven't decided about um, spectators attending, but there's various meetings at the beginning of April for that, and there will be some communications towards the end of April, the beginning of May um about slot regulations at airports during that period um there are two or three airports who already have 
told us that they are increasing parking areas for GABA traffic during the, the match times. So, so it's, not, it's not all doom and gloom, um, but there will be some um, sort of procedures in place and they will be published. So what I, what I leave as a last slide um, is all our contacts. They're, all our email addresses are there and um, the phone number for the flight efficiency task force that we talked about earlier. There's two phone numbers there for them. And uh, feel free if you've got any specific questions for any of the departments listed, or if you just have a, a general question about something else, um, email to one of us and we will endeavor to, to get you the answer to, to your question. So um, that's it from me. Um, I think we will hand back to Vanessa. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you uh, for the four speakers for your presentations. I have been checking in the meantime the Q&A functions. We are for the moment with one question, but no worries, I have some in reserve. So I'm going to uh, make the panel, uh, to keep the panel busy, while you can, of course, have the time to take the time to post your question in a Q&A function, please, please do so. So thank you to our four speakers for your old explanation on the NM functions. No worries for, I think, for the failure, it happens. It's how it is, we are live. Um, and uh, Andy has been offering the possibility for having additional uh, educational sessions. And this would have been, by the way, one of my proposals as well. Uh, so we can set it up after that session today. Um, so before uh, leaving you, uh, I will just, just a quick uh, <laughs> uh, story. I was saying good morning instead of good afternoon just at the beginning of the, of the session. And I can see in the chat uh, box that we have a good day from the Philippines. So I can say even good evening. So good morning, good afternoon and good evening to everybody. <laughs> Sorry. So if I may say, uh, I would like to give the floor back to Giovanni for more general questions, uh, because we have been hearing a lot uh, in the past now hour uh, and a half. Uh, so uh, in a nutshell or in very two or three words, uh, could you please tell us what do you expect from the business aviation operators and com or slash community as a large? Thank you, Giovanni. Well, we don't ask much. Again, uh, we live in an environment that there are a set of rules. Uh, the set of rules we are talking about is mainly, is mainly about ATFCM. I remind that in 2018, 2019, because of the lack of capacity in the network, 400 regulations per day, 26 million minutes of delay, this is not sustainable. But again, we have noticed that if every actor plays their own role, and what I said before, the slide that I said, how can you help us? And then listen, when you have a fly plan, just file the fly plan. Don't be afraid of changing the OBT. Fly what you file. The yo-yo flies, try to file the best possible fly plan with our help with the flight efficiency task force in the pre tactical and contact IFPS if you have a problem. Change the OBT if you have to. Don't be afraid of changing because you receive a bad delay because we can definitely help you. I can assure you that we'll make everything we can in order to keep the delays down to zero. This is a promise that I have made last year and s &M is doing that and we were successful. On the other side, I don't expect major delays with up to 75% of the traffic, but help yourself and help us. Respect the time over the arrival, respect the CTOT if you have one, in case of high delays, contact us SAP through the NMP flight app that Andy was showing us. It will work. This was just a demo, but the definitive function which will work, of course. And uh, don't hesitate to contact us because if you, it's again, as I said before, we can only go out of the problems altogether. This ATM is an environment where the actors cannot work in isolation. And the network manager by ourselves even with all the ability that we have the option to save delays, to offer the services, of course, we need the support of all the actors, that is general business aviation, ANSPs, uh, air, uh, normal airlines, uh, low cost, 
and militaries, ANSPs and CFSPs. We can only go out of this problem altogether. Thank you, Giovanni. So the key word is cooperation. And I think it's working all together yes. and it is building back better. And I think it will be certainly anyway, a conclusion which will fit for all sessions um, nowadays. Um, I'm, ha I'm having a couple of questions coming in. So I will just continue with one or two more from that I prepared. And then I will go, of course, co take some from the Q&A. Uh, but I think well, one of the key ones with that is there deserves to be addressed today. It's also in consideration of one of the major uh, priorities of the European Commission uh, and the citizens in general, uh, uh, citizens' demands. It's to have a better, uh, to be cautious and to, to, to proper handle our CO2 uh, emissions and our CO, CO2 footprint. Uh, and aviation, business aviation is really committed to reduce it to the greatest extent. And so here I would like just to address that question maybe to Boris um, and on how uh, you see it feasible for the business aviation operators to contribute to the reduction of the aviation uh, CO2 footprint, so to play our role into it. Um, so to fly greener, to uh, fly more efficient routes, and uh, how do you see it possible also to um, the business aviation operators to use to to better use the route uh, availability? Thank you, Boris. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, it is really important, uh, and it is actually a challenging to understand that uh, environmental changes is uh, something which is an opportunity for all the stakeholders to improve their operations and actually to have a quite beneficial outcome for all the uh, citizens of the Europe and the European Union. And as such, we need to recognize that the aviation is part of the solution and not the part of the problem. In the same respect, uh, Eurocontrol identified the major areas in which we need all together, all operational stakeholders to put a, a particular focus on to achieve the goals defined by the Green Deal of the European Commission. And some of those would include the support and transition to the uh, new new uh, sustainable aviation fuels, develop highly efficient large capacity and short haul aircrafts, and also to do a fleet renewal, to bridge the gaps that are existing in that area, but also to encourage environmental improvements to the better provision of the shorter and the better routes. It's, this is the main ground in which uh, Eurocontrol NM actually is uh, participating uh, by leading the different airspace changes, mostly visible as the airspace restructuring uh, program from the airspace design point of view. And also in the past, unfortunately, due to the COVID, a very good uh, approach from our operational stakeholders visible in the reduction on the number of the RAD restrictions, which were penalizing the selection of the most optimum uh, uh, route or the trajectory in the network. But there is also uh, another side of that, it, and through the implementation of the free route airspace, through relaxation of the RAD measures and further airspace design restructuring, we are offering more opportunities for actually filing a better flight plans. It's up to the operational stakeholders to investigate those, and actually NM is offering a support for achieving this goal. We also had a number of times mentioned during this meeting that there are pre-tactical and a tactical support to the operation. One of those is Flight Efficiency Task Force, which is already for almost a year working together with a number of operators trying to offer them and to propose the better routes, which would lead not only to the reduction of the CO2, but also to the reduction of other costs which are involved in the, in the total operations uh, uh, built from that perspective. So we need to be proactive. We need to look in the existing opportunities and to take what is offered in order to motivate other stakeholders to be better. Thank you, uh, Boris. I will like to jump on one of the elements that you mentioned is about the free route, because this is also a question which was addressed to me uh, by one of our uh, operators. <laughs> um, free route airspace is progressing very well uh, in Europe. Uh, it's also, by the way, if I'm correct, a mandate uh, by 2024 for the NSPs up to the flight level 330. Uh, but so we support it very well. We are really fine with, uh, with that um, uh, tool and that procedures. 
and we will also see it in a, a, um, a great uh, tool to be extending to uh, to the high altitude in you know, order to have kind of block of airspace. Uh, so how can you see the network manager facilitating the implementation of a European free route structure above the flight level 410 without the inefficient uh, constraints uh, of the national uh, boundaries? Uh, maybe I think Giovanni will be able to... Um, to take the floor for that one? Yeah, thank you, Vanessa. Quite a difficult question. I will start saying that we live, unfortunately, I would say unfortunately, 100 times, in an environment that is quite fragmented. We talk about, we are not lucky as the FAA. They have 50 states or 50 whatever they have, and they just rule, put the rule, and everybody for that kind of things agree and implement at the same time with the roadmap that is common. We have 43 state members. As it happened for many other things, for any technological advancement, enhancement, the free rule test space in some way, the roadmap is not decided by the network manager. We propose, but then at the end it's the state that decides depending on the national investments. And after all, despite there are only two rules for the airspaces, to, for the FRA, for the root test space, every state has decided on their own and so now we are going towards, now to answer the question, in the cross border to put the two nations together, to do different kind of fras together. And then we have to make the cross cross border to make the larger groups like Borealis or the Sexy or the other groups, the parts of, the, of Europe that are grouping themselves with the same route, with the same, pardon, uh, fra structure. So it won't take long. We need to be patient because this is Europe. And unfortunately, we have to accept this, the fragmentation, that we cannot apply the airspace, for example, reorganization all at once in one shot. That is impossible. Even as, sorry, I would say a stupid thing, but again, it's something like to pass from the strip, the paper strip to a, an electronic strip system, it takes years because every country organizes it by itself and is not implemented all at once. The FRA is the same story, mm -hmm. and uh, but be confident that by 2024, 25, you will start seeing really a great progress and you will be able to fly like in the slide that I shown before from Istanbul to London Etro, just drawing a straight line from the departure to the arrival, except following the seed and the star. So that's not possible yet, but we are the network manager. I can assure you that we are strongly working on that and pushing, pushing, pushing doing whatever we can also on this side and we need to be patient a little bit more. So you are really, in fact, having a facilitating role here in, in improving the coordination with the INSPs uh, all around Europe for that. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, I would like just to take, so also I have some more questions, but I would like to take some from the, uh, from the audience. Um, I, have, I would like just first of all to address um, uh, two ones in combined. Uh, that was its regard to the availability of the uh, and the access to the uh, network uh, management portal. Uh, first of all, is the network management portal and certainly the new uh, features and the new applications that you are preparing, will it be available on iPad and tablet? And a very uh, also very easy questions to answer. Is the access to the not network management portal, uh, uh, which is for publicly available, uh, uh, but if you have uh, maybe a better idea on how to get access to it to for the audience, and so about the availability of it on uh, on the mobile mobile devices. Thank who could who yeah. could take that question, Joven? Andy, 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 thank you, thank you, Andy. Yeah, hi. It's, uh, I, I've I've answered uh, via the text as well. Um, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. But uh, the 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 inter the application is designed for a computer or a Mac. Uh, the application will run on a tablet on your iPad, but certain aspects of the UI, the user interface, uh, like the mouse hover click wouldn't would be more difficult to use uh, on a touchscreen tablet uh, device. <laughs> I've put a link in the in the answers uh, to the question about okay. how to get access. There is a website from Eurocontrol that you can use to uh, make a request. If you don't already have access, 
uh, secure token access, you can make a request for access via that link. The Super. current tokens which are supplied to you that you can use on the NOT portal uh, will also be uh, used without any configuration change for the uh, flight application. Thank you, Andy. Um, another questions are being raised in the Q&A uh, function. So what is Eurocontrol uh, experience in integrating and linking its own safe uh, SMS with those of the aircraft operators? Sorry, Vanessa, could, I did not get it. Yes, yeah, sure. So what is your control experience in making the link with your own SMS with the one uh, of the aircraft operators? You mean Do you, the Did SMS? you have any experience with that, with that link? Sorry, where there I, was did a not, failure? I did not get it. Is the FMS, flight management system? The, no, the SMS, safety management no. system. S ah, the SMS, safety, okay. SMS, safety, SMS, so please. SMS. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any experience? Well, uh, uh, Tony Liku is the guru on that. Maybe I think that anyway we are trying to be. I think that Tony is not here. Is the guru? No problem. Of, we uh, can also answer the question. But anyway, the answer is follow. the answer is yes. Of course, don't forget that we are we have we are a coordinator for the a number of functions. That is the safety. Of course, is for the EASA. But definitely, we are the operational guys and. Uh, the section of Tony, the unit of Tony is doing everything possible in order to spread it and to harmonize in all Europe the same practices. That's our main scope. <laughs> That's so it works mm -hmm. either for operation, for security, for safety, and all the and all the items that we enter, of course, at day by day in the, in the in the network. Thank you. Another question for you. Um, can operators help in pointing out RAD restrictions that might not be used or, or that might not be used or that you will recommend to get rid of or uh, how to handle, how can we help in, in handling the RAD restrictions? Okay, so the RAD restriction, again, I've always defined the RAD as a cancer of the network and particularly with the free route airspace, if somebody wants to draw a line from uh, an airport A to an airport B, we don't need the RAD restriction. Obviously, the great job, and I would say the great job that we did as an M is to convince the NSPs that the RAD restrictions are not necessary with this amount of traffic. What's the problem? Why we should keep it uh, all day long? Let's remove it. So, so far, 1,200 RAD restrictions are suspended, and uh, we are now working in order to convince the NSP to suspend it, to suspend them until the end of September. How can the customers can help? Indefinitely is reporting to the NM Flight Efficiency Task Force. If you have a RAD restriction that, sorry to use that term, that is on your stomach and that you think that is completely useless or whatever, then please report it to the guys mm -hmm. and work to the NSPs in order to limit the application time during the day from 5 to 20 hundred or, or just when it is strictly necessary or to delete, it com to delete it completely. We don't have to forget one thing. I define this as a cancer because the RAD restrictions are there since many years. And I can tell you that in few cases, some of them are not even understandable why they are there. Okay, and I stop it here. So please help us in removing them, just highlighting which are the problematic ones to so the Flight Efficiency Task Force, and then we'll do everything during the meeting to work with the FMP in order to reduce the time application or to delete it completely. Thank you, Giovanni. Um, I would like just to address one more question as well to Tony, uh, and it's with regards to airport activities and the deployment of the CDM process uh, to a larger extent, so to a larger number of airports, uh, since business aviation is flying, is flying in two uh, third of the cases to uh, secondary airports. We would like quite to, keen to know from you, to hear from you, uh, on how you see the possibility to extend the uh, cooperation decision-making process to those secondary airports and how in general the network manager works with the secondary airports. Okay, uh, I'll do Thank my you. best. Uh, Thank you. First off, uh, yes, we, ha we have the full airport CDM airports and th there are plans to bring some more online in the coming year or so um, obviously with the current situation some of the the investment is getting delayed on some of those airports so 
Um, but to, just to give you an idea of those ones, um, which will be full CDM, um, we're looking at uh, Riga, Malaga, Dublin, Vienna, and Stockholm. And in addition, probably very early next year will be Athens, which is obviously quite a big airport for um, business operators. For the for the secondary airports, we depending on their size or how they want to connect to the network manager. It's all it's all about connecting to the network manager. Um, so and it's everything together gives us pr predictability in the system. So we have advanced towers. There's a number of advanced towers around Europe, and at, from the airport unit, we're also introducing a couple of new systems to, if you like, connect some of these secondary airports automatically. One of those being um, via ADSB. So we, we, we have our own ADSB monitoring system that we install at the airport and that also generates messages to the network manager system. So, so instead of somebody in the tower at the smaller airports doing everything, the, the computers um, do it as well. We also are working very closely with um, one or two other, if you like, applications. Um, and the, I, those two will be rolled out to some of the secondary airports. Um, we also have an idea to have, a, if you like, a, an app that will be running on a tablet. So we're, we're looking at just specific timestamps from those very small airports. Um, from a from an operator's perspective, we're we're, we're really looking for off block air um, airborne landing and on block times, and that that sort of gives us the the predictability rather than waiting for the for the radars and the um, the other systems to catch up. So so yes, there will be a few more big airports come online, but at the same time, some of the smaller airports will be connected to us, um, but it shouldn't. Um, affect your operations with any additional requirements to to keep um, sending extra messages. So hopefully that answers it. It does answer it. It just that's showing as well the path towards digitalization that the network manager is um, going through in order to improve uh, the CDM, so the better connections uh, with all the nodes of the network. And of course, that's, uh, as you know, of key importance. Uh, and that's when I'm representing the, uh, the business aviation community in, um, in different fronts. It's something that we are really keen to see, to have that even better reflected in your uh, network manager work, all programs and your control product as a whole, to have the network perspective will hold the nodes, small and large ones. So that's of key importance to us. And we thank you for taking that into consideration. Um, I would like also to take um, uh, um, um, another perspective. So again, Giovanni, uh, if I may uh, bother you again with another question. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that it's uh, linked to uh, the situation we are in and that we want all to... Uh, <laughs> to go out of, of course, uh, in a quicker manner, as quickly as possible. Um, and it has been often raised and said, um, and this has been, by the way, uh, experienced during the last uh, summer, that business aviation due to its business model will certainly be able to um, recover quicker or will be the, among the ones recovery um, uh, to, to be able to recover uh, the quicker. Um, and so to return to normal operations or, or maybe to new uh, new norms. Um, but at some, sometimes uh, we have the feeling or our community in general have the feeling that uh, the institutions in general um, have less considerations for business aviation sector because we are still considered maybe sometimes by, you know, like a niche. Uh, um, uh, and so, um, but from what I have been uh, experiences with Eurocontrol uh, and with the network manager is that the network manager doesn't have, um, doesn't make any difference. Uh, a flight is a flight. Uh, so uh, if you, would you mind just also to have a bit of words about it, um, uh, Giovanni, just to. Uh, uh, 
Yes, thank you, Vanessa. Indeed, uh, uh, my father was saying, uh, sorry, but I was working with my father many, many years ago in a shop, and he was telling me just that a customer is a customer. It doesn't matter from the shoot that the customer wears. So just so I use this example, but just to tell you that in the last 22 years, we're counting the IFR flies. For me, IFR, I don't care if it is a military, if it is a, a GABA, if it is an airline, a low cost or whatever, I don't mind, or cargo. So for us, a flight is a flight is a very important from the network. If I recall well, a few years ago, there was 10% of the flights were general aviation and business aviation. 10% is a lot, eh? we cannot do without that. We cannot ignore anything. And this was already a concept that was valid pre-COVID era. Now imagine in the COVID era, where we are all waiting for the recovery. Obviously, a customer is a customer, is the first come, first served, is the logic that is applied when slot distribution or when we receive a request at the help desk on any, on any service that we provide. So again, I think that for me, I don't and we don't and then M doesn't make any difference for the customers. I don't hear you. Thank you. Sorry, yeah. I was in mute. That was my okay. turn. Um, Vanessa, do you have me one last comment about the, uh, I Please remember that I asked you to remove one slide, but I cannot say, and nobody can really say when uh, the network will be back at 11.1 million flights. But from my experience of the last 22 years, one thing is certain, we are bound for growth constantly. Despite the caps of the previous years that we had in 9-11, uh, 2008, 2011, the, if you look in the long term, in the medium long term, there will be a growth. I'm pretty sure, I cannot say when, that we will overtake again 11.1 .1 million flights and the sector will be prosperous again and there will be a lot of business for everybody because it's in the nature. It's in the nature of, of the ATM. This is the way we cannot stop the world by communicating. We live in a global environment. So in my opinion, whenever it will be, the recovery will be spectacular. What we are doing now here with the NM is that we are directing, we are deviating resources in order to enhance our system. And the progress that you will see in the next five, 10 years will be simply astonishing. We are talking about the future because now we are changing a system whose concept is, was old 25 years. So mine is a message of optimism, just wait and see. Thank you, Giovanni. Uh, looking at the time, I would like just to, la to take one last question from the floor. Um, and here it is, uh, whoever could answer it, it's um, a question raised by, a proposal raised by Nedjet. Um, would you help, it would be helpful for our planning to have the airspace users plan available one day prior, so pre-tactical, spe specifically due to the military areas, for instance, in the Sion area. So um, will it be possible, do you think, to cope with that demand? Allora, it is already possible because we have the NM Milos that are the military representatives in the NMOC who are looking at the um, areas, at the military areas that are going to be occupied the next day. We have also a process that is called the AUP, UUP, where a number of AMC, AMC not all of them, because only this again is a problem of, intake, of uh, fragmentation once again. We have the new, the guys that are on board in airplane management cell who use the AUPU process the day before in order to tell us what will be the area that will be occupied and of course for which suspend the flight plans. With the new system, the ASM, airspace management, will really go to interstellar dimension because obviously we don't have that capability yet, but every area in the future with the future INM will be considered in terms of demand, a network impact, and of course also as a suggestion to the airspace users on how to better avoid it, uh, just flying the best possible efficient route, also according to their own business criteria. It's not yet possible. I'm, I said again, our system is old as a concept 25 years, but the future one will be, will give all this. Not in the immediate, but we have to wait three to more years. Thank you, Giovanni. Three to four years. Thank you. Um, I propose now to go for the second pool uh, questions before we close the session. Um, so I, I, after being able to listen to the network manager presentation, uh, I hope that um, all of you have been able to get to glean much more information and explanation on the different services. 
And so we'll be quite keen to, to hear if the network manager can, you feel that the network manager can make your life easier and with one of those different solutions. I'm taking also continuing while we are waiting for the results, just to inform you that we'll have, we have intentions to organize an OPS uh, committee meeting very soon. Um, and that we will also be of course happy as we have been raising it earlier to have some additional information sessions with the network manager in the new future. It's one also one of the proposal of the, uh, of the pool. Great. Thank you. So this yeah. will be happy to work on internally and then uh, uh, liaising with the network manager for, for potential options around that. Thank you so much for our um, uh, four speakers. It has been really uh, uh, entertaining session. I would also to uh, a big thank to as well Chris uh, who is the uh, airspace users liaison officer who has been contributing in preparing that session as well with uh, uh, five of us. Uh, my big thanks as well to my colleagues who have been uh, supporting us for the logistic and to my boss as well, of course, to my bosses, to my uh, association. And of course, so giving the back floor, uh, the giving the floor back to my boss, uh, Robert. Thank you, everybody, and have a, a nice day. Thank you for attending. Thank you very much for the invitation once again. All the best. Thank well, you. I would like to thank all of you. Uh, and uh, on that note, I would like to end this excellent panel. Uh, based on the comments and questions received, I think it was very useful and uh, in aviation at large, but also business aviation, we uh, tend to moan a lot on ATM. But I would like to make clear that EBEA is a great supporter of Eurocontrol. Because they are our partner in making the ATM in Europe more efficient. They are our friends and we really appreciate them making their time available. And let's keep that conversation going. So if we're allowed to travel again, Please do go and visit I mean, uh, Eurocontrol in Brussels. Um, it's amazing to see the infrastructure, but more important, the software, meaning the people, because they have to think in the right place. And I think the most important takeaways I have are is um, from the first poll question, only 27% of the people attending the webinar are using the Eurocontrol portal. I think after this session, uh, you know, we hope to see an increase of it because I think it's an excellent tool. Yo-yo flights, they are as much an annoyance and a risk for Eurocontrol as it is for flight crews. So yeah, let's get rid of them, love it. Unfortunately for pilots, but fortunately for safety, the sharp term tool will make some flights less exciting. Sorry guys, but I think safety-wise we're happy with that. I think the new N NMP flight management tool will make your life much easier, much faster. I absolutely loved the um, more efficient fun function on that. Um, I think the airport function is also a great improvement. You know, at the end of the day, it's all about communications and getting the slots and getting the right people. You know, um, if you see that flight from Istanbul to London and you see all the different people that you know have to align, um, it's amazing. We can do one flight, let alone as many as we do. And and it's communication. Communication is key. Uh, the fun one is Greece will remain an issue regardless of COVID. Um, so uh, <laughs> we will not solve COVID or not solve Greece in my uh, my time. The other thing, do report any red restriction that you feel are useless. You know, you are feet on the ground. You fly the same route, specifically around your your home base, etc. You sometimes run into things. Ask the question, why the heck is it there? And the the fun ones are the ones where you know you will get a call back and people say we don't know either, and that's good. It's an you know seventeen hundred and fifty. Um, structures, so there will be places in there that need to be cleaned up. I love the uh, customers or customer one, and um, I'm more happy now walking into um, Eurocontrol wearing, you know, old shoes or new shoes. I know I'm going to be looked after the same way, so that's very good. Thank you, Giovanni. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, Eurocontrol is the partner to make your flights more efficient. Let's make sure you liaise with them, either directly or through the EBAA. And we've seen all the contact details. Um, so, you know, the most important takeaway is Eurocontrol is there to help you. I would like to let you know that the presentation will be made available online. So you have the chance to look back and look at all the slides. We again thank our sponsor for today, MyAerops. Um, they are also obviously completely aligned on aviation software for flight <laughs> operations. 
Now this ties nicely in what we've been discussing today. Should you have any remaining questions after the session, let us know on the email or on the online, um, uh, or check it on the, uh, the online on our website. But let us know, let us help you with us. Um, I always like to challenge Vanessa as much as possible. And if she doesn't know the answer, she's the type of person who will know the answer by the end of the week, one way or the other. With that, and again, a thank you to the panel and a final pitch for our Sustainable Aviation Fuel Summit that we will be hosting on the 20th of April. And um, I would like to thank the panel. Thank you very much. I wish you all a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.